I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> Tomorrow is my last qualifying race for a guaranteed entry into the marathon for next year. I did it. I'm officially a New York City Marathon qualifier for 2023. It's one of my biggest fears, especially thinking about November and the marathon. Whatever happens, happens, but who knows? Maybe something will happen and I can't run the full marathon. So in the next couple days, you'll be seeing me run the New York City Marathon, my very first marathon. I can't believe the day's almost here. I've been working for this moment for so long that it just, it felt like it was never gonna happen. And no lie, there definitely were times during training when I questioned if this is something that I really want to do anymore because everything I had going on was feeling too much. And you saw that and you were right there with me through that. 85 degrees. It was kind of a rocky start. One of the honey stingers. Flavor isn't like sitting well with my stomach. I wish that would have gone better. I'm not enjoying this. My feet hurt, my legs hurt, but I'm just, I'm exhausted. Sometimes you can just train and train and train and you just forget that it's, it's all gonna end one day. And that day is in two days. Today's Friday and my family is actually here, which is so awesome. I saw them last night. I haven't seen them since Christmas. They flew out here from Oregon. So I'm gonna uh, meet up with them now in just a little bit to go to the expo, which if you didn't know, is like this big New York Roadrunner event where you go and pick up your running bib, which is your race number. And then there's lots of merch there. It's a way to start getting pumped up for the big day. <sighs> Breathe. I feel like a little nervous. Can you pick up on that? Do you feel that too? A lot of preparation and a lot of waiting and waiting and waiting. But we have a lot we're gonna go through together in the next few days, so get ready. It's so crazy to think that I was here a year ago volunteering, thinking about how things are gonna be at this moment. My family's already there too, so I gotta get a move on. Got the family here. Hey! <laughs> Mom, sister, <laughs> picking up the running bib now. Hell yeah. Can I curse? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Crazy. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm feeling good. I'm ready for this. I'm ready to race. <laughs> Ready to go. We're finding merch. <laughs> what should we get? Extra small, it's too tight. I'm going to a team breakfast for the team ABTA. They invited me and I thought it was really cool. And I'm bringing my sister with me. Thank goodness, I usually go to these things by myself. And I don't know if anyone there knows each other, you know? So I don't know if like I'll be someone that's left out because I just was fundraising for them. I wasn't like training with them. I think I should mention, we raised over $10,000. The ABTA is dedicated to brain tumor research, education, support, for caregivers and patients navigating a very difficult diagnosis. Like I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for believing in a cause that I really believe in. I just have so much gratitude. I think when it'll sink in like mile 23, I'm like, ah, I will be crying. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get some bagels. <laughs> I hope you can just know how thankful I am for everyone who donated and shared about my fundraiser for the ABTA. It just was so great to meet with the team and the people who work for the organization and just some amazing people doing amazing things. And it's just so cool that they let me be a part of it even though I'm not like technically on their team. But I'll represent Team ABTA 
any day. I know the fundraiser has now come to a close. Yeah, I'm just really thankful. I feel like we've done some really cool things together as a community and I really can't wait to see what we do next. My sister and my family went to a Broadway show and so I'm here trying to figure my shit out. It was a challenge to get everything ready for race day while remembering I have to continue hydrating and eating certain foods at certain times to properly fuel and it was just a lot to juggle. On top of all that, the nerves were starting to settle in and I started to feel a little self-conscious about how much slower I am than all the other runners that will be there. I've always wanted to be like them flying through the course when in reality, I'm just lucky if I don't trip and fall on my face. These little nagging voices were non-stop the day before the race. It's 6.30 and I'm just probably gonna take a shower after for this and knock out. I have a 4, 4.30 a.m. wake up call tomorrow, so. <sighs> My bus tomorrow is, it leaves at six from the Midtown Library. So I'm gonna be at the village or the waiting area for probably around four, four and a half hours. We're in the city. <laughs> this is not me, this is outside. <laughs> this better not be happening all night. Feeling much more relaxed. It's only seven o'clock and I'm just like winding down. It's nice. Oh shoot, I forgot to put my food in the fridge. Well, I brought like my honey and tea and cinnamon <laughs> and then another bowl of rice, rice and potatoes. <laughs> and then like all of my oatmeal. <laughs> Back up on my grizzly on my bar, yeah, yeah. Ask me how I'm doing, doing awesome, yeah, yeah. Fake it to the G, that's why you lost him, uh, uh. If you come around, it's time it costs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't trust nobody, no, we all fucked up. I don't trust nobody, only God I trust. Over traumatized, so the squad might bust. Probably get your body, then the squad locked up. It's kind of fun to be somewhere that's not my house. We're like in the middle of the city too. I'm not gonna show you the exact location, but I'm staying here because it's easier for me to get to where I need to catch the bus tomorrow because of all of the street closures that are happening tomorrow. And I, I kind of want to Uber, so yeah. This couch is really comfortable. <laughs> I'm like really comfy. <laughs> it's 8.45. I'm starting to get a little nervous. Like just the fact that I have my retainer in. I haven't done a 20 mile run in four weeks, you know? <sighs> but I have done like long runs since then. If I can sleep through this noise, that'll be a miracle. Yeah, I'm nervous that my body is not like ready for what's to come, but it feels like fully healed. It just needs a good sleep. Okay, see you tomorrow morning. Good morning, it's race day. I didn't end up sleeping down here. I went up to the loft because the noise was keeping me awake. I think I maybe, I think I got like five or six hours, probably more around five. We had daylight savings last night, which was really good. I have to be out of here in 30 minutes. I'm all of a sudden nervous that my body can't handle this marathon, but I know that if for some reason it can't, this can, and this. No matter what happens today, man, I am just so proud of everything we've accomplished together to reach this place. All the chaos, all the burnout, all the late nights and extra coffee in the morning to get through the day. I made it to the moment I've been waiting for for almost two years now. And I'm healthy. My period magically started earlier this month, so it was done by today. My body's feeling good and the weather could not be better. Oh, we in the bag. <laughs> You know those moments in your life that just feel like they're meant to be? This was definitely one of those for me. It's hard to believe in just a few hours I'm gonna be running through every borough, feeling the energy of the 50,000 other runners and spectators, and also experience the challenge of it all. New York Marathon is one of the most challenging marathon courses in the world, and I have never been more ready, and I deserve to be there. Look, I don't even know what's gonna happen a year from now or even two days from now, so if this ends up being my last race ever, I'm gonna give it everything I've got, and I'm so glad you're coming with me. I just, well right now I'm walking to the waiting area because it's like 8, 8 o'clock now? Yeah. And I don't start until 11.30 so I have a ton of time just to kind of collect myself. But I just met someone who watches my videos. Hey Christy, if you watch this, you're awesome. Good luck. I hope you have a good race. Let me know in the comments how it went. <laughs> So cool, what a surreal experience.
The middle banner on the bib indicates your wave, start color, and growl like to be one of the best days of my life, I think. Oh, yeah. It's hard to believe that two years of preparation has like led to today. It's hard for it to sink in a little bit. I saw walking by the bathrooms, not these ones, but the apartment guy on TikTok who's like, hey, how much you pay for rent in New York City? Can I see your apartment? I saw him. He's running the marathon. Bienvenue au stade de départ du groupe 5. Merci de vous assurer que la partie centrale de votre dossard indique votre groupe. Votre couleur de départ. Let's go! Starting line. How many folks out there running New York City for the first time this morning? We're the first time. Like broken or something, but it says I was going like eight minutes, like 40 seconds from my last mile, which is so much faster. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> we just passed the 5k. Um, I think it was me going out too fast because now I'm back at my original pace. I hope that won't cost me in the end. We'll see. But yeah, we're in Brooklyn. Anyways, this is insane, guys. All that time I sacrificed. I was out in it. I almost just tripped. I did trip. I did almost fell. Oh, that didn't happen. Um, just past mile 10. I'm feeling it. My feet are not feeling that good. But my mind is as fresh as the first mile. We're about to pass the halfway point. Mile 13. There we go. We're going up a massive hill now. The hips hurt a lot. But I just saw one of my best friends. Just really helped. Thanks, Jules. Let's crush the second half. I think I'm gonna make my goal 
cool with high bars, but it's okay. It's fine. I saw my sister though. This shit is really hard. for the rest of my life. That was insane. I sent it, like, I felt like I was flying. Just okay. incredible. I did myself proud. I did it. <laughs> we did it. Before picture <laughs> and Julie, we about to eat the pizza. beer. Yeah, don't, don't look at the feet. Disregard the feet. Pizza. Cheers. Oh yeah, wait. We have to do this together. To us, to you, to us, to us, and to this big ass pizza. <laughs> we love her. And this big ass medal. Yay! <laughs> I was like, where are you pointing the camera? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Woo! I just like turned off. We did it, Joe. I'm way too tired to give you the rundown of the whole race. So I'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> Crazy. This is such a massive accomplishment. I'm gonna give you the full recap. Basically, I ran the marathon in five hours, 31 minutes, and 55 seconds. Am I proud of that time? I am proud of that time. I worked my freaking ass off. I really did. The fact that I'm not a professional athlete, the fact that I was working basically two full-time jobs and moved in the middle of training, it did impact my performance on the day of. But I can honestly say that I gave everything to the training I did do and I'm extremely proud of that. If it was the only thing I was focusing on, then maybe I would have felt in better shape. I also felt like I tapered maybe, but too much and too soon. Next marathon, I don't think I would do my longest run four weeks out. And then I was just so relieved to have more time to focus on work and YouTube and stuff that I just really didn't do much strength training. All my tempo runs and like quicker runs to help me keep my, my speed up. I kind of let that go in the taper and I think that messed, that kind of messed me up in my run itself. Yeah, so it's giving my average pace for every 5K. So basically it was within the 12 minute mile range, which is something I didn't run at all. Like I was much quicker than that in my training. So honestly, some, sometimes that happens, the pace my Strava gives me versus the pace that my like bib gives me at races. But yeah, if I look at my Strava splits, it's much different. It was saying I was within the 10 to 11 minute range in the first half, and then definitely after mile 21, I was in the 12 minute miles easily. I really did hit a wall, but I was very like proud of how steady my pace was the whole time, and I really only stopped to drink water and to pee, I peed twice. In a video before, I mentioned that I got new, sh like shoes that have New Balance fuel cells, and they're carbon plated, and I didn't really, understand what carbon plated was. I got them from like a fleet feed recommendation when I went to their store and got the foot scan and everything. You know the you know the drill. But when I started training with those, I started to like get pain in my feet and I thought it was just like my foot adjusting to the shoe. But you guys, I think I ended up with plantar fasciitis. <laughs> That foot pain I was concerned about was actually plantar fasciitis and I just didn't know it. And I'm honestly kind of glad I didn't know it because it probably would have psyched me out for the marathon. Around mile two and a half maybe, I started to feel pretty intense foot pain and it was just that way throughout the whole race. So I think it would have made it a lot more like enjoyable if I didn't have that happening. So now we're like on damage control with that because I seriously like it's not really good to run a marathon with plantar fasciitis but like I was running that 
I was running that marathon no matter what. Sprained ankle, I'm walking it. Like I was going to finish. I was going to do the run. Like there's nothing that was gonna stop me unless I like got COVID and couldn't breathe or something. The last mile was top three best moments of my life. And I did not expect that because of how much pain I was in. Coming out of Central Park and then turning onto 59th Street and that stretch before we go back into Central Park, it's like just, it is uphill, but there's something in me that just like switched on and I felt like I was flying. Looking back at my splits, I was not flying. It was like a 10 minute mile, but based on my pacing earlier in the race, it felt like I was just kicking it into gear in the last second. I just felt like my heart took over, but I just ran for myself. And I ran for like all of those times I didn't want to lace up my shoes and, and go, but like that discipline gave me the moment there. And like, that's something I'm never going to forget, honestly. It felt like an Olympic moment. Like I was running down the street, like there's crowds on either side, just cheering, cheering, but the sun was setting and so it was so beautiful. And my view was of the west side and I just looked up. I just saw like my city and my beautiful city and it just choked me up so much and I was just running. And that moment in my city was something I'm never gonna forget. Just really cool that like, I worked so hard. You guys were there along with me. Like I really felt your presence in the run anytime I wanted to give up. I just thought about everyone watching and like everyone who donated. I met a lovely person who watched my videos at the starting village. One person passed me running. It was like towards the end and he was like, I, <laughs> it's like, I love your videos. And like, all I could think to say was like, no shit. It was just so nice of him to say something. I needed that in that moment. Cause it was just, I was in a lot of pain and I know he must've been too. So that's again, like so nice of him to say something. Another subscriber caught me going into the Bronx, I think it was. It was just, oh my God, it was crazy. And then there was another one like in mile 25. I barely saw her, you, okay. You posted an Instagram story. If you were the one holding the sign with my name on it. And I like heard, go Chelsea, go. Go Chelsea, go. Woo! Cause I didn't want to look over and like assume it was for me, you know? And I was like, oh, that's my name too. <laughs> Like I didn't honestly know if you were there, if that sign was for me, but then I watched my Instagram stories later and she tagged me and, and it was, and that I'm just like, I feel like such an idiot. I should have just like smiled and said thank you or waved or something, but I was just, honestly, I was delirious. And all I can think is like, this is the beginning, you know? But of course, like this whole time I've been saying, it's my first and last marathon, for now it is. I wasn't so happy with my time, but I also wasn't training to get a good time. I was just kind of training to finish and to survive. But I also learned that to get your name in the New York Times for running the marathon, you have to, like there's a different cutoff each year. I thought it was five hours and I learned that like last week, but it turns out this year was like four hours and 36 minutes to get your name in the New York Times. So not next year, obviously I need a year, I think just to find a new hobby, maybe give my body a little bit of a break and do the nine plus one again. And then 2025 go for, go for another one and get my name in the New York Times. I'm so proud. Uh, and this was just a huge thing checked off my bucket list and I'm really glad that we got to do it together. If you like this medal, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I love you. We did it. I know I'm gonna look back on this video, you know, maybe closer to the marathon next year and just see how far I've come. So I can't wait to like look back at where I started.